Hey everyone, Senrai Kai here. Today I'm going to be watching the 10th episode of the second season of Nisekoi. So, let's jump on in, see what the gang is up to. 3, 2, 1, play. Okay, we're done with home run. I promise nothing. There's a gang. Yeah, definitely pretty lucky. Especially you. <laughs> uh, Rudy Chun, you weren't supposed to tell them that part. Man, she is so cute. Stop trying to get rid of Shu. <laughs> no, you. That was our response. Uh, looks like Gigi Joe is. <laughs> Sidekick. She was fine. Don't be bullying, Shu. I don't know how I'm supposed to answer that question. Because I'm pretty sure it's you. I mean... I mean, Rudy's like the only girl on the show that's not part of Joe's harem. The only one that, you know. And obviously, she's the only girl that... Well, she's the girl that Chu interacts with the most in the show. Obviously, she acts pretty antagonistic to him, but... I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just her own brand of Tsundere. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure... I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know that that was even talked about him liking somebody, but... If he does like somebody, yeah, it would be you, Rudy. Or I just completely misread Shu, one of the two. But yeah, I'm curious why Rudy even brought that up all of a sudden, because I don't think he... Like, what gave her that idea? Because he's always talking, you know, in general about the... Cuties around him, right? So just an interesting thing to say all of a sudden. <sighs> and there's a pansu, and there's a slap. Which go hand in hand a lot in anime. Owen, like supporting somebody, yeah. So apparently we are going to continue this. Probably not either of them. I mean, actually, I don't even know if Rudy gave him chocolate on Valentine's Day or not. She might have. I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this. Nose itching. <laughs> well, there's a line. Your approach is questionable, but I'll I'll see how it goes.
Okay. That's quite a way to describe somebody. It really wasn't. Apparently we are. There's nobody else but Rudy that he could possibly be talking about, though. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, ouch, confident in that. I mean, they could like to agree with him, and they, they have a thing as well. But I think what he has with Rudy is, is special. <laughs> has anyone described you as like like a flower in your entire life? I don't think she was ready for that question. Yeah, it's all purely hypothetical, you know. Yeah, it's not the answer I expected. And it got kind of serious all of a sudden. Yeah, not that I actually love anyone, so I wouldn't know for sure. Yeah, that, I did sound like that. I wonder why. You know, <laughs> he was trying to be supportive, but yeah, it did not go well. We're gonna go one through one to interview these girls and find out if any of them is an unattainable flower. That happened? Okay, if that happened, I completely forgot about that. We're not implying we're not implying the teachers are one of the likes, are we? Because that would be, yeah, especially unattainable for a student. I knew that was coming. I could feel it. So yeah, definitely unattainable. That doesn't get much... Oh man, poor guy. It doesn't get much more unattainable, unattainable than that. And you can see the moment where his heart split in two. <laughs> yeah, because if she has one he likes, this is kind of a tragic scene right here. I mean, I guess it would explain why they seem like they had a little bit had a little, a little bit of emphasis on the teacher at the very first shot of the open of the episode. So yeah, it is looking like that's where we're going with this. And not a thing I thought anyone would ever say. Yeah, we got the shaft head too. <laughs> Those are some faces. Are we invited to the wedding? Definitely a big deal. And Shu is, uh, you know, he's in the coping process. <laughs> I 
I might as well say it now. I barely seen any of her, and I and I missed her. <laughs> Definitely knows him well. Is he zooming on that monkey face? <laughs> True enough. <laughs> Some kind of childhood friend you are. Yeah, that definitely would complicate her life a bit. I mean, sometimes you gotta strip yourself for the sake of yourself. Man, it feels so weird having Shu be like the, the main character of an episode. But yeah, I, I feel so bad for him. Wonder if by the end of the episode he is gonna say something to her. It would definitely be a regret for sure. When I got in a wedding dress. <laughs> that was a bit too much. Oh yeah, I better shot a bit there. I don't even want to think about such things. Well, it's still relevant to the episode, so yes. <laughs> I mean, there's not that many people getting married in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, not too different than what we got from Shu. Wonder why. The blush and the flailing the arms around is what really sells it. He's much better at telling when she lies than anyone else. Is he better than Shu? 
What does he have that Shu doesn't have? Some shooting stars there. Did you make a wish? Are you sure there's nothing you want to tell her before she's gone? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's something. <laughs> you know, just when you blush that much, it gives the scene a bit of a different feel to it. Oh, it's a gummy. What, what's up? Okay. Is she gonna confess to him here? I mean, probably not, but... It's not that hard to figure out. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, pretty hardcore for a hypothetical scenario here. Nothing much. Yeah, theoretical romance. Very, very different than a fake romance. What a send off. We're going to be encouraging. <laughs> Yeah. Confess your undying feelings. I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> I just kind of kind of getting a little bit of chills now. Oh. Give me one hell of a push, like the open note. Oh, 
ก็อย่างครับเพราะฉะนั้นก็ไม่เป็นสนาทอีกอย่างหนึ่งนะครับฉันอยากให้คุณช่วยเขาทำนะแต่ฉันรู้ว่ามันไม่จะแก้ปัญหาอะไรเลยเขาต้องทำอะไรแล้วเขาไม่เคยทำอะไรแบบนี้มาก่อนเขาเริ่มต้นขึ้นมาฉันคิดว่าเขามีกระเป๋าเขาจะทำให้เสร็จก่อนที่เขาจะขึ้นไปใช่ไหมครับใช่ไหมครับใช่ไหมครับใช่ไหมครับใช่ไหมครับใช่ไหมครับอ่ะเราจะมีดิท Well, there you go. Do you feel better? Yeah, give me that dinner. <laughs> I actually, I'm about to bring that up before I before you even started. I'm good looking takoyaki though. Yeah, you wouldn't do that, would you, Ichijo? Ah, uh, yeah, he's gonna wait until she's about to marry somebody else to say something. <laughs> like a true childhood friend. Oh, that's yeah. Only the only the only dead is voice. I mean, Hanakata's voice, but yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, we're already here together, you know, might as well invite you. Like, she obviously wasn't going to say no to that. You're running out of time. There's not that much, not that many episodes left. I'm pretty sure season two is the last season. Although the manga, I'm sure, continues past this. But... Okay, this is a new ED. You got Ludi in a, an upside down umbrella. In a book. Terrible strategy for keeping the book dry, by the way. Very colorful rain. And it's a very clear Rudy focus on the ED too. <laughs> okay, that umbrella seemed better days.
And after the rain is the rainbow. Yeah, that was a nice idea. I like that. <laughs> of course, it's everyone. <laughs> Can't just be the two of them. But, uh, but yeah. That was the 10th episode of the second season of Nisekoi. Definitely a unexpected episode, for sure. Like, the Shu was the main focus. Only, you wouldn't know about the ED, and the ED was more of a Rudy focus, but... The episode itself was definitely on the Shu focus. And the teacher, Kyoko. Right, I feel like we haven't seen her too much before this. There really hasn't been any focus on her, I'm pretty sure. Up until this point, like, she's probably been in scenes. I mean, I'm not denying that, but... I really feel like she was the focal point of an episode quite the same way as with this one, but like I said, at the very beginning, it did seem like there was a little bit of focus on her existence, like kind of trying to remind the audience that she does exist. So that should have been a pretty big hint to me, especially with she was bringing up the whole unattainable flower thing. I, if I was a smarter person, I could have put that all together, but I was set on the whole Rudy thing, you know, because they obviously have a bit of a special dynamic, and now that Kyoko's gone, she might be who he shifts target to. Once the once it gets over that, but, but yeah, I, I did not guess the teacher not until they were together in the one in the one episode in that one scene because I was watching it and after a few seconds pass and I'm like, because I am sitting there kind of like processing it like is the teacher the one that he had to crush on because it made so much sense all of a sudden but Tsumuki also had a decent role in the episode making it clear to Ichijo kind of what to do. Like, that was basically her role was to allow him to be in a, in a in a position where he could give Shu the necessary push to give that love confession before before she's gone forever. Because, yeah, Kyoko announced getting married and leaving the school and all that. And if he wanted to say something, it had to be before then. And he got it pretty close, but he found the taxi in the rain. He definitely got a cold after this episode, like, without question. But... It was nice to see kind of that bond between Shu and Ichijo. Because they are childhood friends. They do know each other pretty well. They are close. And it's good to have an episode that really can showcase that. But. Yeah, not really too much to say about the episode than that. It was a pretty, pretty, pretty solid episode of a pretty unexpected subject. But it was good. So. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.